Because what's happening with the Indianapolis Colts, let's talk quarterbacks here, and maybe more specifically, the rehabilitation of a quarterback by somebody who has unwavering belief in his ability to resuscitate a once, you know, let's face it, early steps. Seemed like Carson was going to the Hall of Fame, the way yeah. it looked early. Yeah. So his, his former coach, Frank Reich, is with the Colts. That's where uh, Carson is now. And this unwavering belief, which which I'm okay with, but based on where the Colts are organizationally and their their attempt to win, they're they're good. Uh, Frank Reich's calculations better be on the money, Teak. Right? <laughs> I'm telling you, you're right. This is it's not that it's risky because Carson Wentz is, on average, he's been okay. Last year he was downright abysmal. I think he had the 28th ranked pass uh, QBR rating in the National Football League, and that's out of 35 uh, that were that were um, you know eligible. Obviously, because uh, you put a guy like Jalen uh, Hurts in or mm-hmm. Andy Dalton who came in for for Dak Prescott, so it's more than than the 32 teams but he was way down at the bottom and he was egregiously bad in some of those games and ultimately to the point that he got benched and so the question is what caused all of that and Frank Reich was interesting when talking about this because he they don't buy and I can understand why that it was just because they drafted Jalen Hurts that all of a sudden Carson Wentz goes into a tank Mm -hmm. and so it must have been something else what that something else is I don't know because I wasn't in that building we could obviously speculate uh, uh, could it have been partly Carson Wentz trying to be hero too much, which we did see at times uh, throughout his, his first his, his his four years there in Philadelphia? But can Frank Reich fix it? It just by just because now Carson Wentz is comfortable. I, I I'm not sold on that. Uh, Frank Reich believes it, and I hope for his sake that he's right. But I, it's a wait and see for me, a strong wait and see for me. Me too, me too. Uh, I think it's worth a flyer here, but I, I'd like to maybe uh, a, a better plan B just in case. I'm not so sure that they have that. But <laughs> no, they let, don't at all. Right? Okay. And listen, Colts, 11 and five a year ago, one of the few teams top 10 offensive points scored per game, top mm-hmm. 10 defensive points allowed. We know about their offensive line. We know about some of their stars. They're ready. Uh, a division that is imminently winnable here. I, I, I'd like to see, you know, how. Well, I think we'll have a pretty early assessment of um, of Wentz. Like if if Wentz comes out and he's rocky and he's skittish the first couple of weeks of the season, I'm, I'm not saying that it's beyond salvageable at that point. But then the noise will become so amplified. Now it's not just one city or one situation. Now it's a carryover. Now it's a new fan base that's disenchanted. I mean, I hate to put all this pressure on his doorstep because yeah. he's, he's coming off a hellacious 18 months, but Carson Wentz better be good pretty quick. Yeah, he better. He's not going to get that. Look, it, it benefits him that it's this way, that is going from Philadelphia to Indianapolis as opposed to the other way, going from Indianapolis to, say, Philadelphia. Yes. <laughs> you know what I yes. mean? So the Indy fans may be a little bit more forgiving, but they have no equity. There's no equity with Carson Wentz right now. There's no, like, loyalty with him at this point. They they trust in their head coach, but their head coach hasn't won them a Super Bowl, so it's not like his word is, 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 is the end-all, be-all. And so they, he has to get this right and Carson Wentz more importantly has to get right and I think the, the question uh, you know becomes ultimately for Carson Wentz can he find and I think he will because the run game is has been really good in Indy for the last couple of years uh, it, can he find that that confidence that he that, that forces him not to have to feel like he got to, he has to do everything right mm-hmm. I think in Philly what we started to see obviously last year but even the year before a little bit it was like man we're we're, we're, we're stalled here on all Offense. Yeah, we're we're stalling here. Let me go be a hero. Like you can't if unless you're I don't know, I don't know if any quarterback can do that. To be perfectly honest, with you. I don't think Tom Brady could do that if you don't have the right scheme and the right players around you. It's it's really hard to go be a hero. Maybe Lamar Jackson uh, has that in his tool belt because mm-hmm. he can take off and run and figure it out with his legs. But it, you got to play the game within the team concept, and I think he lost that in Philly. And so finding getting that back in Indy is Frank Reich's. You know, number one job and if he does that then we'll we'll laud frank reich for being kind of a quarterback whisperer you know there's legacies that are built on how you handle quarterbacks bruce arians has has shown this over the course of his long career sam uh, sean payton yep. has shown this over his career there's certain guys that you just you just trust with 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 growing quarterbacks and fixing quarterbacks so to speak and frank reich has an opportunity to do that because of how bad carson wentz was last year and forget 
forget about how the way you know Reich will be re- received and and remembered, and and it's an astute point. I'm not saying that I don't agree. I do. He'll mm-hmm. be now positioned as somebody that. Uh, just has this this extra sense, this this intuition that is able to to unlock quarterbacks. But if that's the case, they're also going to be vying for AFC championships. Yeah, you know, for a couple of years, Carson Wentz is young, uh, as we just chronicled. They have a lot around him. But I want to go back to something you said before. Uh, you used the word pressing, and that's not really associated too often with quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. You think about you know pressing. Uh, as, uh, aspects of, of pressing in the other sports. And, and, you know, what happens if you're in a funk in the batter's box? Huh? Yeah. Jeez, I'm one for 19. You start squeezing the bat. I mean, you squeeze they, the old expression, you squeeze the sawdust out of the bat, <laughs> right? And when you do that, you lose all quickness and you just you miss your pitch, right? You extend yep. the zone. If you're a pitcher uh, like DeGrom, this doesn't happen to him because he's, he's beyond that. But I could see if you're a pitcher that's get that, that consistently gets nominal run support, you know inwardly that when you, you come out of the bullpen, you, you know, you've got to keep this thing to one or two runs. Otherwise, you're not, you have no chance to win. That's right. and, when you, and when you try to be so fine, that's generally when you meatball one and it gets spun <laughs> 400 feet the other way. I, I can make all these analogies. Grabbing the putter too tight, you know, a loose swing on a golf course late in a round when you're pressing. But we don't talk about quarterbacks pressing. We talk about quarterbacks as either having the requisite physical talents and then, of course, the cerebral nature and the heart rate, which then obviously encompasses a superior player. But we very rarely talk about quarterbacks pressing. Mm-hmm. But he pressed a year ago, and I, I, I went through that, that, that whole thing because I, I think it's really applicable. He had no receivers, man. It's true. And we do conveniently. I'm not saying that he's, he's a guaranteed home run reclamation project, although I'd bet more yes than no. Yeah. But we do omit. This guy had a lot of impediments. He didn't have a lot around him. Yeah, Deshaun Jackson, who was supposed to be, you know, one of his, uh, I don't know, uh, anchor players back. He's old, yeah, obviously. But Deshaun Jackson just kind of, he didn't even show up at all last year. No. Uh, really. And it was and it was basically dependent upon his tight ends, whether it's Dallas Goddard or, or Zach Ertz. They were the most consistent of the bunch. And, and Ertz no, got hurt? And Ertz got hurt. I mean, Greg Ward was the leading receiver <laughs> on the year. Greg Ward, I, I mean, I like the kid. He was, he was playing quarterback in, in college, man, yeah. and so at, at Houston. So, look, I, I I hear what you're saying, but at some point, it, it was on Carson Wentz making some bad decisions. Yeah, he and I think that's what Reich was getting at. Coach Reich was getting at talking about being accountable and and fixing the things that he did wrong. He he made a lot of bad decisions and um, and and hurt his team more than he was helping it, despite the fact that he didn't have a lot around him. No, but Teague, I don't I don't dispute that claim hundred percent. I mean, he made some decisions that were really that mirrored rookie mistakes yes right i grant you that but was that derived or were were those mistakes derived largely from you know guys not being open or was Mm -hmm. it an absence of fundamentals what a a, a mechanical breakdown was a little bit of both i'm not smart enough to give you the answer i'm not a quarterback guru but i i lean toward Listen, if guys aren't open, you're a competitor. You got to throw it up. You got to you got to make something happen. Yeah, but you can't do that to the tune of what do you have? Fifteen interceptions last year. Yeah, you know, it's not it, like he had thirty like Jameis Winston did the no, year before. He, he didn't, but he also only played he only twelve played, games. Yeah, yeah. He only played twelve games. Nah. His interception percentage, and this is what BT and I three have and tended a half. to three and a half have tended Ugh. to lean towards as opposed yeah. to total yeah. interceptions. Because look, if you throw the ball, I don't know, seven hundred times in a season, you're gonna have a few interceptions. Just is yes. what it is, um, unless you're Aaron Rodgers. Uh, or even Matt Ryan, he didn't have that many after leading the league last year uh, in in pass attempts and completions. Um, but yeah, you know when when he gets to the point where I think that was the problem. Like what you just said, BT was the problem with Carson Wentz. He'd get to the point where it's like, dude, nobody's open. Let me scramble around. Is it? Uh, I think I can. I think I can get this down there. Let me just throw it and see what happens. Yep. Like when you get to the point where you're saying, let me throw it and see what happens, you become a liability to your team, and it's why it's hard to blame Doug Peterson for saying, all right, Jalen Hurts might be in that exact same situation, but what Jalen Hurts is going to do because he's he's. He's not more of an athlete because Carson Wentz is actually a pretty good athlete. He is, but very he's, good. he's more capable of a runner. Mm-hmm. What Jalen Hurts is going to do is tuck the ball and go get eight yards, and maybe bust one and goes for forty. And 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 so it became about who had the 
who gave us the best chance? This is the Eagles. Who gave us the best chance to win? And it became Jalen Hurts over Carson Wentz. And so I kind of agree with what Frank Reich is saying. I don't know if Carson Wentz was broken. Maybe his mentality was broken. Mm-hmm. His skill set's not, because that's that is what it is. It was just the decision making was fo- was so flawed that the Eagles had no choice but to sit him on the bench. Yeah, and listen, he didn't comport himself well. Uh, that that was a theme on the show. It didn't yeah. seem to be number one. He he dodged his media responsibilities at the mm-hmm. end of the season during the end of the you know during the final month. That is weak, man. If if you're a franchise quarterback in the NFL, the biggest sport in our country. You've got to be accountable. You've got to be visible. You've got to be present. And let's face it, he kind of ran and hit for a little bit. He did. Uh, he ducked out on baggy day, didn't even address the Philadelphia media. That is as, that is as weak as it gets. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing I'll say about Reich, while I certainly trust his, his instincts, I think he's a great football mind, as do you, uh, we, we do know that they both share a very deep Christian faith. And a lot yes. of people have, con- okay. a lot of people have made that connection. Now, which is great. If, if that's, if that's that, that synergy, that... Uh, helps propel you, phenomenal. But that can't be the only reason <laughs> that Frank Reich is bringing him in. Frank Reich is, is, is way smarter than that. I guarantee he looked at every single throw from every angle many times last year before making this commitment to Carson Wentz and said, all right, I, I see no one's open downfield, left pocket collapsed like that, right side got bent in like that, he's running for his, he's chucking and ducking, he's playing hero ball, he's trying to make a play, he's a competitor. I really, you know, the more I think about this, I, I, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm actually pretty resolute that Carson Wentz is going to come out and, and dispel critics pretty quickly. I'm not saying he's going to be an MVP candidate right away, but I, I don't, I, I'd be stunned if we're having a discussion in September. This guy's finished. What in the world happened to him? He is beyond salvation. You got to bench him. Yeah. I just don't see that happening. I don't think so either. I don't. I think, I think you're right. And again, I like Carson Wentz. I just Me hated too. how I hated how he played and how he behaved last year. Yep. Because that was not what we saw in the first three. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when we drop fresh content.